Every single one of us are made to love and to be loved. This is what I believe gives life its deepest meaning and makes it so worth living. When we try to picture what our path of happiness is gonna look like, we often have the tendency to wanna to be the author of our own script, to figure it out on our own. What do I wanna do with my life? How do I wanna spend it? Uh, what do I wanna be when I grow up? We really are directing our lives. Of course, it's natural for us to try to find what am I most passionate about? What inspires me? And that's totally legit. All of us have that natural attraction to want to find our place in life that can make our life meaningful and even to want to make a difference. In the process of doing that, we often forget that our life isn't just about ourselves. It's not just about making myself happy, but it's my life is about more than just me. And as part of us finding our path to happiness, we need to start to ask bigger questions than simply, what do I want? If we look to scripture, all of scripture taken together is a single love story. It's a love story about how much God personally loves us to such an extent he knows no bounds on how willing he is to humble himself in order to come and speak to our hearts in order that he may live there. One monumental moment that was so huge, that made such a difference in changing history forever, was when God chose in the fullness of time, the moment the world had been waiting for, this specific moment in which he would come and present himself before a woman through the agency of one of his greatest angels, St. Gabriel the Archangel. He comes before this beautiful woman who had been prepared for this very moment. And God represented by this angel as his agent, this angel comes before her and he honors her. He's amazed by how beautiful God has made her. And he says with astonishment, hail, full of grace. He doesn't even call her by her first name. He calls her by what God has done in her. And he honors what God did in her seeing that she was destined for this precise moment, for this time and place in history. She was destined for this moment to encounter God in this way, because this would be a defining moment of her life. The angel begins to present to her God's proposal. It was like a divine proposal, as if God were asking her, God the Holy Spirit, were asking her to marry him. It was as if the Holy Spirit was saying, Mary, will you marry me? Will you give me your humanity? God wanted to enter into, on a new level, into a relationship of divine intimacy with his people. And he was gonna start with this specific person whose purpose was to become the mother of God made man. God was ready to come into the world and appear on the human scene as one of us in order to experience what we experience from within our own skin in order to give us the fullness of life, access to Him. But it all started with this one encounter with Mary and the angel, and her response was paramount to what was going to happen and what would become possible for God to accomplish. 
like any other human being, she could have said no to God's invitation. But by her yes, paradise was opened and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. I want us all to remember and to realize, to truly believe, not simply to believe in our head, but to believe in our heart that God really is alive, that God is real, He does exist, He is love. And He ultimately, ultimately God is in love with you. God truly loves the world. That is, He loves each person as if we were each the only person in the world there was to love. As if each of us were the only person that He had to pay attention to and take care of. That's how attentive God is to every single person, undivided, all his heart, mind, soul, and strength. We experience that in the measure that we open up our own hearts, that we open our hearts to let God in. And sometimes that can be kind of scary. If we haven't done it before, or whatever crossroads where we're at, where God might be asking something new, or he's knocking on the door of our heart and now he wants to come in in a new way. He's asking us to follow him in a new direction. He's starting to shift things, to change things in our lives in such a way that it really takes faith and daring, audacity. We have to be brave to actually say, yes, I trust enough to let you take control. But sometimes it's so hard to want to let go of our own sense of control. It's so hard to want to let go of what I want or my plans or my ideas or my dreams for my life. But ultimately, what this mystery of the Annunciation teaches us is that God has a dream for every single one of us. And it's a dream that we may each possess the fullness of life. And that fullness of life, which is Christ, wants to be made flesh, wants to come alive, wants to become personally part of my personality, my humanity, in a way that is irrepeatable and in a way that's irreplaceable. In other words, no one else can say yes to God in the way that only you can. No one else can fill your shoes. No one else can fulfill the plan that God has placed in your hands. It's very specific. God's plans are very tailor fit specific for each person. And that grace of what God desires to do in our life, that grace of what God desires to do in our life builds on who we are, our humanity, our nature. It, it coalesces, it's in harmony with our deepest desires to want to live life to the full our deepest desires to be happy, our deepest desires to love and be loved. It totally is in harmony with our heart's deepest desire, what we're made for. And so we have to begin to believe that God has our best interest in mind whenever He calls us to know Him and to love Him and to serve Him. God has our our best interest in mind in whatever He asks of us. His will is nothing less than the best in what we could possibly strive for. There's this one passage from Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, in which our Lord says to us, I know the plans I have for you. Plans for welfare, for our well-being, and not for evil, not for disappointment, not for failure, but to give us a future and a hope. As our Lord says in the Gospels, in the Gospel of John, the Lord desires that we may have life and have it abundantly, that our joy may be complete. And so he stands at the door of our hearts, asking permission 
for him to come in. God, in his gentleness, asks our permission to come into our lives. He cannot enter into our hearts unless we say, yes, you are welcome here. Live in me. Show me who I'm meant to be. And that submission is not coercive. That submission, that free gift of ourselves to God who wants to give us himself freely, that obedience in being willing to let go of myself and say, God, you show me. You show me your plans for me. You chose me. I didn't choose you. Ultimately, you loved me before I even knew you. And now that I'm coming to know you with my mind, I give you my heart. And I ask you, live in, my, live in me. Take my life. And when we have the courage to let go of ourselves and to surrender to our Savior, the power of His Spirit can come upon us. The power of the Holy Spirit can overshadow us and make possible for us what we may have thought was impossible. When we're willing to, sub to simply surrender in submission to His mission, God's Spirit is set in motion. And once that we've had that encounter with God's love, that when we discovered God's love for us, that He has a purpose for us and a plan from the moment we were conceived in our mother's wombs, the moment we start to, to believe that, to accept it, we get, begin to see it come to pass. We begin to see God's plan start, God's plan start to take place. We see the purpose of who we're meant to be start to take shape. Piece by piece, one yes at a time, God's plans start to develop our purpose. And then we discover that our purpose is not simply what we do, it's who we are. Our purpose is to allow Christ to be risen in me, alive in me, to bring out the best in me, that I may become the best version of myself. Shout out to Matthew Kelly. When we do that, when we move forward, courageous, allowing faith to cast out fear, to not be afraid to say, yes, Lord, your plans be done in me, not my will, your will be done. Behold, here I am. I don't understand where I'm going, where you're taking me. I don't understand the who, the what, or the where, but here I am. Lead me and guide me to be who I'm meant to be. Once we say that, we enter into an adventure of God's amazing grace and goodness. And we can be amazed by what God can do in us that we may have never even saw or sought for ourselves. Ultimately, God's dream for you is better than your dream for yourself. Jesus Christ living in you is greater than you living in you. And that yes is our key to paradise, to God's presence, shaping me to be the person that he made me to be. One person that knew this so well was St. Augustine. And he expressed it in a wonderful way. And to paraphrase it, he said, the greatest adventure in life is to seek God. The greatest discovery is to find him. And the greatest of all romances is to be loved by him. What I would like to do now is I would like to pray together that what we've just talked about may come to pass in our lives, that the Spirit of the Lord may truly be sent upon us as, as the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God was sent upon Mary, that this seed, this word, may be planted in our souls and bear fruit. Let us ask the Lord now 
to shine the light of his face upon us as we pray. Abba, eternal Father, my Lord and my God, my God and my all, we give you glory for your great mystery of mercy in calling Mary to be the new Eve, the Ark of the New Covenant, the mother of all mothers, the mother of, your, of our Savior, your Son. Help us, Father, like her, to not be afraid, to say yes to your will in our lives. Help us, Father God, to not be afraid, to open wide our hearts to the love of Christ, to your purpose for our life. Abba, Father, help us to not be afraid, but may our faith cast out all fear, and with the confident assurance that you are truly near to us, be it done unto us, Lord, according to your will and your wisdom. May your mercy be made flesh in our life, that we may glorify you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. May the blessing of Almighty God come upon you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Pray for me as I will for you, that we may be faithfully fervent to the end. God love you.